Well, speaking of which, I mean, it is your first book. How did you just suddenly decide that you're going to get into novel writing? Because it's it's not an easy thing, I know. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it's what I, I'd i wanted to turn this into a novel for uh, for a long... Is this the interview part? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Sorry. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll fade it in at the end of my oh. thing to... <laughs> oh yeah yeah no no problem <laughs> now i'll just now i'll just splice this in because it'll work anyway <laughs> i i gotta like my, my level of like how correct charismatic my answer is <laughs> so uh no uh no i would wanted to turn this into a book for a really really long time but me me and my adhd ass it's like well sometimes i can get distracted and move on to another project mm -hmm. this started out as a movie um, like this is something that I'd wanted to do in any kind of format since like the very, very early two thousands when, uh, me and my buddy, Ryan Mitchelly, we did some movies together. We did, uh, Jesus bro together mm -hmm. and the two snob movies together. Uh, we were DJs. We met when we were both radio DJs and he was in film school he was starting to take some introduction to film classes at our local community college and he he needed to do a short film so we probably had some drinks and we were in the uh we were in the the studio uh for the for the station he was at and you know we love slasher movies so it got on like a, a slasher movie where Ryan, or then Ryan was like, oh, and what if the killer used a bow and arrow or something like that? And so then I was like, so there there are a couple of scenes in it that involve a bow and arrow because of that or not bow and arrow, a crossbow. So and then my mind shifted to just different genres we could insert into it. So it branched off from me thinking like from the template that you usually see in slasher movies, like prom night and slaughter high and terror train where something the main characters do something bad to somebody at the beginning of the movie usually it's the nerdy character and then it's a prank gone wrong or something like that and then it jumps ahead some years later they're all still together they happen to be in a location where that killer is so i said to ryan i go but dude what if in the middle of those 10 years the nuclear holocaust happens <laughs> so from that point it couldn't be a short film anymore <laughs> we moved on to another thing but that plot line always stuck with me and in 2004 i wrote a script for it and the title that Ryan had when we were DJs was like uh, Fletcher or something like that. And then I was like, I like class of 86 better. So I turned it to class of 86 when I wrote this script, but we never would have had the budget for this kind of thing. And I wouldn't have even wanted to try making it with even the most minor budgets that it could have had, because it would never look like what I would want it to look like in my head, um, which would be like, you know, an eighties trauma movie crossed mm -hmm. with crossed with like a big budget bomb <laughs> and like, you know, a, a slasher movie, but also a cold war movie, mm -hmm. you know, like prom night. If the events of the day after are going on in the background. <laughs> so, so no, it, it was just some script that was always there. And I had it tried thinking I could adapt it into other things. I know at one point we were talking about a comic book another point. It was like, well, maybe it could be just like a, a short little like animated series or something like that. Then I thought, you know, this will work best as a book because everything that's in the script, I can put in the book. I can expand on several different things, make it way longer. And most importantly, since this, since the script version of it was written like 20 years ago, it all had to be freaking changed. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, it isn't just, it isn't just simply like, oh, I took a script and adapted it into a book. It isn't like, it was like, I had the template there. It just had to be severely rewritten because I look at it like, oh yeah, I was drunk in 21 when I wrote the script of it. <laughs> so it was like totally rewritten and everything. So eventually, so last year, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to take some time and actually do this. I'd been thinking about it too long. I need to 
dedicate a lot of time to actually sitting down, taking some time off from the cinema snob and everything, and just really focusing on this. And I did, and it was and it was fun to do. I really, I really, really liked it a lot. What was the hardest thing about getting through the novel as for the writing process? I'm not used to writing action. I've always been a dialogue writer. So uh, in a lot of scripts that I've written, I'm also directing them. Uh, so my focus on a lot of those scripts for the movies I've done is, is yeah, a, a lot of dialogue and the book's got a lot. It's very dialogue heavy too. Like, cause that's my favorite thing to write. I really love writing dialogue. So I, I did have to get very good at writing the action parts of it. Cause if it was something that I had directed, I know what's going on in my head so I can, I can make sense of what's on that, but this is for like a wide audience that's reading it. Like, you know, it's gotta be really good. So, so that part sure. And also, um, you know, because like I'm writing a script and it's in the present tense. So with this, it, 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 it's not so that was it, it took some getting used to but you know it had an editor a develop uh, mm -hmm. dude who was the developmental editor on there like he he fixed a lot of that stuff like <laughs> severely and like <laughs> added some things tweaked some things left his, <laughs> some really good notes on it and yeah no he, he he really made it pretty great when you when you write for a long time you discover that you have certain crutches that you lean on what did you discover about yourself while writing writing this about your style of uh writing it is kind of like all right let me let me tone down the references a little bit <laughs> it is kind of that because on the cinema snob it's a lot of references mm -hmm. and this with it taking place in 1986 don't get me wrong there's references in the book of, of course there's it's a blending of a lot of different genres from that time so so there are but i did in especially in rewriting it a couple of times I would tone some of those down. <laughs> Although <laughs> you'll like this. There is like a little uh uh kind of dinner for fiends nod in it. So <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Like so in the post apocalyptic part, uh there's a part where they're in a uh, bar mm. and there's some people in there playing uh hard knuckle. I don't know if you remember the, yep. the post-apocalyptic movie where they chop their fingers off <laughs> if they lose or something. Now, okay, that was one of the hardest parts of writing this because it's hard enough making heads or tails of the rules of hard knuckle when you're just simply watching the movie to then write it into a book. <laughs> Make sure that your reader's not just going, dude, I, I just... I, I was it got to a point where I'm just making up shit about the rules of hard knuckle <laughs> just you know there's a little guillotine on the side of the pool table like eventually someone's got to get their pinky cut off let me try to figure out uh, to connect the dots to how that happens <laughs> there's also a great early episode of uh, Tales from the Crypt too I think oh is it really yeah it was uh, first or second really early yeah. yeah, because by the end, like both guys that are playing the game have nothing left but stubs. <laughs> They're still trying to. Nice. <laughs> Those anthology shows, you'll always get some like pinky game or something mm -hmm. like uh, was it was it Twilight Zone that had the Peter Laurie, uh, Steve McQueen uh, with the lighter? Uh, uh, was it, was it Twilight Zone or was it Outer, Outer Limits? Limits? I think was it was it Outer, Outer Limits. Limits? Okay. Yeah. Or they remade Outer... it in four rooms. <laughs> Outer Limits went a little bit more hardcore with the ideas. Yeah, this one was hardcore. <laughs> like, don't make a bet with Peter Lorre, the the original yes. Bond villain. I want you, I want your pinky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got it right here. I've got uh the proof copy of it that was sent to me that will not have this font with this <laughs> font for my name on there. I was like, let me have this like temporary font. So it's like, I have the only copy that looks like this, mm -hmm. that it's got like the little not for resale thing on there. Mm -hmm. You like this. I flipped through it. I'm like, Oh, regardless, it's good. I got a proof copy <laughs> sent to me because I open it up and I go like, wait a minute, aren't books supposed to have page numbers? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I've never published a book before. So in my head, I'm thinking like, oh, well, the page numbers will just automatically. The publisher will do that for you. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> but that, that was a super easy fix. That was just like a button. Like, it's yeah. fine. Like, but still, it's like, oh, I got another proof copy being <laughs> sent to me. <laughs> Uh, for for people that don't know, Dinner for Fiends was a podcast. Uh, I don't know if they still do it over there at Dread Central, but it started uh, early on uh, after we created the site in 2006. It was it would be me, Foy, Uncle Creepy, Johnny Butane, and yeah. like, uh, Adam Green. We'd have revolving guests of people, and yeah, it was just a it was a horror podcast. And sometimes it would get a little out of hand. <laughs> it was great. Like I would I would go to the site. So- I like every day to like refresh to see if there was a new one and which would take a while because sometimes some time would go between the episodes and so like yeah hard knuckle was one of the movies talked about on there later i did do a snob episode on it uh a while back Mm -hmm. so when i wrote this i was just like and that that was something i added when i did the the book that wasn't in the, the script with just playing hard knuckle at one point <laughs> um <laughs> i was like you know what i'm gonna have them play hard knuckle and like it was like the most research i freaking put it was like trying to figure out wait a minute how do you play that stupid game <laughs> uh, I'm like well maybe it works that the characters are kind of drunk <laughs> Yeah, because no sober person's gonna be like, maybe I want to lose a body part today. Like a hard knuckle, yeah. <laughs> uh, for your characters, uh, we we all draw on our on our lives and what we know to create our characters. How did you manifest yours? Um, that's a good question. Uh, because it's still because I never changed any characters or anything like that for as far back as this story is kind of gone in my head. The characters are always there and the types of characters that they are are, are there. And so those kind of just kind of got, got drawn from different types that you would see mm-hmm. and you know, something like Slaughter High, Prom Night, and movies like that. They're like there's the or just even taking the slasher part out of it, just kind of high school comedies in general of mm-hmm. them. Like you could draw comparisons to characters in Porky's and to screwballs. Like the yeah. the character the character of the villain in it is very much drawn from uh a lot of different Eddie D's and characters. Mm-hmm. So no, they you know, it, it certainly stemmed from that where it's like I want the guy who is like kind of cool, has the curly hair and the jacket. You know, I want the two like kind of, you know, punk characters that are out that are out of like a trauma film or something like class of 1984. Uh, I I have like kind of nods to different teachers that I had uh, when I was in high school. Um, And so I I would draw a little bit uh, from from that a lot of again like i said a lot of it very much expanded on when i did the book because i i had a lot of fun writing this this story of these characters in the first act of it where it's their senior year so there is kind of the they're all about themselves when they're getting ready to graduate and they are whoo I don't know if you hear that, but the cats are going crazy. <laughs> um, so, no, they're they're also trying to get their research paper done, and their grade is writing on it. So then they try cheating off of the nerdy kid. He kind of inadvertently screws him over. Mm-hmm. So then it becomes they're going to prank him, and one thing leads to another. He gets like severely burnt and set on fire. Yeah, <laughs> but I so I liked having they're dealing with that very illegal situation they just did while also wanting to graduate but there's all this cold war panic shit going on in the background that they're oblivious to (laughs) like they're talking about their gowns their papers whether they'll get an f meanwhile only half of the school is showing up at their graduation because they're all going to stores and getting in their bomb shelters and shit (laughs) Did you write a 15 minute long nuclear holocaust scene like in uh the day after? 
It's just that's a much great of destruction. Scene, oh yeah, Shit, dude. Like I, I got the poster there because I was. I, I love. I'm promoting something <clears throat> called Class of '86, and it's all 1983 posters <laughs> behind me. I was doing a video on 1983 movies, so no, I was. I, just coincidentally, like I was rewatching a lot of those for this 1983 video I was doing, and yeah, it's mostly Cold War movies in 1983. It doesn't matter the genre; it can mm-hmm. be something comedic like survivors or it could be something terrifying like the day after that scene holds up man like it's still chilling when you watch that shit like Mm -hmm. so no in this since the tone of it is pretty comedic throughout like not to where it's like a parody but it's certainly a dark comedy um and when it got to the part where it does get um, a, a post-apocalyptic. It, 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 it's, it's yeah, the second act of it, and then it just sort of fills in the gaps of what has been going on in the last ten years. And for that, there's this movie that I really, really like a lot, and it, it, it kind of is where I came up with the idea of what if it's just post-apocalyptic. So there's this movie that Bruno Mattei did called Rats Night of Terror. Mm-hmm. I love Rats Night of Terror. So Rats Night of Terror is a killer rat movie where they're held up in this abandoned building and there's just hordes of rats after them. And it could have just stopped there. It's just a simple killer rat movie. But no, they're like, let's make it post-apocalyptic. So you're popping in what you think is just this simple killer rat movie. And then it opens with this scroll of like the year is 10 AB after the bomb <laughs> when the cities fell like whoa this is a lot of backstory for this <laughs> it does a little something like that not that like it opens with that but it does do like uh the year is 10 AA after the apocalypse <laughs> and it's like Coming we, were, up with, we weren't imaginative with our terminology. Yeah, exactly. So I not like the nuclear the bombs dropped. There goes our originality. We don't need to think about <laughs> shit too much anymore. We're not going to use old Latin to try to name things. We're just fuck it. <laughs> I like that. Like uh, my, the editor said to me, he goes, "Are you sure they'd survive a nuclear explosion?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> By, by pure accident, probably. Yeah, just, yeah. Just uh, like, stumble into a fallout shelter. <laughs> these That's what we learned about these movies in the 1980s. You can survive that. Like, yeah, your, your clothes will just be dirty and you have to ride around on motorcycles. Like... <laughs> Like that, the building then implodes right then when Steve Gutenberg w- runs right into it. The second yeah. he's inside the door, the entire thing just blows out, and he's like, "I'm fine." That's well. That's how he turned invisible in the Man Who Wasn't There 3D. <laughs> Both movies the same year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's just like, well, you know, it destroyed the cities and everything, but this group of friends are still hanging out. They still have their van. <laughs> they do. They still have the same van. <laughs> They now use bullets as currency. Uh, that that would make sense. That would be yeah, the most logical thing in a, a post-apocalyptic movie that you would trade ammo exactly. as your one and only currency. I know. I was like, this is actually, I think, the most realistic thing that that happens in this future. <laughs> it's, like when you, it's like movies where they're still greedy for actual physical cash it's like you yeah. wouldn't be <laughs> no yeah it's in this it's like bullets are currency they <clears throat> yeah they trade it a lot they get drinks with it they have to go to an underground shelter every 13 days because of the acid rain i don't know how realistic that is <laughs> that's but they get kicked out though that's why they have to go to the abandoned high school where the burnt up nerdy kid is still living <laughs> that's where the revenge sets in it's, like, it, it's almost like a uh, sunshine <laughs> just, yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's do you incorporate any of the typical uh, apocalypse tropes like like mutants and cannibals and that kind of thing? Not r- so much the mutants. I mean, mm-hmm. it does. It, it goes in that ballpark, mm-hmm. like not exactly that, not not exactly mutants or uh, 
rat people, although well, the <laughs> phrase rat people is used at one point in it, but um, not quite that, but there is a kind of sort of monster movie ballpark of that. Mm. If you read it, you'll probably know what I'm talking about when it gets to that point in it, but that's pretty later on. Um, so, yeah, n- no, not 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 quite that that part of it Mm -hmm. like it it, i kind of wanted to stick with like a combination of something like that but also like the high school slasher movie part of it Mm -hmm. just again like i said post-apocalyptic so there will be car chases and motorcycle chases in it (laughs) oh and also estes perkle is in it (laughs) is he still (laughs) oh he He was he didn't die till the 90s right the scene that he's in is earlier than 1986. Oh, okay. Like I wrote, there's a backstory for a character in it where his backstory is essentially what you would see in a dare, in a dare movie. Like this kind of like, just say no PSA sort of thing is like this character's backstory. So there's a part where a character is raised religious and there's a scene where it shows them at, at church when he's younger. And I, I it, it was kind of one of those deals where it's like, I'll just make the, priestess to sparkle <laughs> <laughs> you fit in the line won't you come didn't you <laughs> it's yeah it's in there <laughs> i'm like well i i've gone this far i might as well <laughs> if you're gonna put purple in there it's gotta have yeah. a line <laughs> it's kind of sad that the 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 common uh, a common person out there who's never watched those exploitation religious films probably only knows estes purple from that line yeah. yeah from from that and any and a lot of the memes that came from it with these people clearly from like mississippi playing germans <laughs> these communists are really southern yeah oh yeah totally like all oh, those movies are great like i remember when i did the what because he did uh the ho- the footman one mm-hmm. where it was like if communists come <laughs> they're gonna chop your heads off and then it shows it yep. and then there's the burning hell which mm-hmm. yeah burning <laughs> in the lake of fire and then when i did the third one when I, when I did a cinema snob episode on the third one that was all about heaven i thought like well that one won't be graphic it's all about heaven but he found a way <laughs> to still put graphic violence it is heaven film. That's just heaven to him. It's very bloody. He's he's trying to get what he believes his job is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You got to scare his you got to scare him into <laughs> into believing what you say. <laughs> I mean, he did a good job at. He had the I was surprised that anyone would put that much effort into three separate films trying to save people and going that far. Because you and don't a, see that kind of commitment from religious figures anymore. <laughs> and a lot of it came from the director too, mm-hmm. uh, Ron Ormond, where since Perkle wasn't from the film world or storytelling world, he just thought he would just stand in front of the camera and talk and that would be it. And there's a really good interview with uh, the director's son, who's in a couple of the movies, yep. but he kind of breaks it down where it was like, no, we had to like kind of, tell him how movies work (laughs) and that like here's what you do to make it entertaining we need to have a story cut to this cut to that and it was an interesting look at just like the making of what is some pretty batshit stuff (laughs) but like sort of breaking it down in like film speak (laughs) so i was so it just him being in the book it's just like one really kind of quick aside like Mm -hmm. It, it it wasn't really it, it, that just kind of came from me writing and being like you know what i'll just i'll just make him estes burkle <laughs> like tom cruise is in the american psycho book i can put yeah. estes burkle in <laughs> in this in this book <laughs> uh as far as publishing goes you have your you have your um proof and I saw that it's available on for ebooks. When yeah. will the physical copy be available for people to? Pick I up? want it to be the same day. So, mm-hmm. like with uh, yeah, the, it, it, I want it to all come out July seventh, and the ebook definitely will. With uh, the paperback and uh, the hardcover, yeah, I just got to click a button and be like, oh, publish. Then it's available. But it. <clears throat> 
it does say on there like uh may take up to 72 hours now it has I, I think that's an extreme scenario maybe because it it did that it also gave me that same message when i made the ebook available for pre-orders and it was up within like a few hours mm-hmm. so i'm you know hoping that's the case when i make the paperback and the hardcover live but the ebook at least <clears throat> cuz you can only do pre-orders on the ebook uh you you can't for the uh I don't know why like it, it's just not an option that's available mm-hmm. to do a uh, pre-order on paperback or hardcover but they should be available the same day if the if the hardcover if the hardcover and the paperback aren't available the same day it will be like soon after mm-hmm. <clears throat> did you find that writing is now more rewarding than doing videos do you think you're going to make a, a a shift to being strictly a, I would author? like to I'm older now. I'm, I, I'm, you know, I got a son on the way. Like I would like not to give up, you know, the channel, like completely or anything. I, I wouldn't want to do that. I still really, really love playing the character. I have, a, I still have a lot of fun doing it, but if this is something that I could transition into, it, it is incredibly rewarding because i feel like um for me this was better than doing it as a movie if i were to do it as a movie i feel like this is better because one just for better or worse it's a hundred percent on me you know it's like everything i want in it is there everything that i envisioned in my head when i was writing it is there there's nothing that it, it, it we kind of had to compromise on due to any kind of budget or effects or anything like that or condensing the story or anything. No, I could make it longer. I could make it stronger. I could keep in everything I wanted to keep in. I could take out whatever I wanted to take out. So that part of it was very, 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 very rewarding. And that was what I always wanted for this project that, you know, whether like, let's say, we did do we were able to do it years and years ago as a film i did always want it to be something that was like well if it bombs it's my bomb (laughs) like because like there is a quality to it where it does kind of feel like like it's almost written as something that if it came out in the 80s would have like came and went but found an audience later (laughs) so it was i just kind of had that in my head where it was like it's 100 percent on me let's go for it (laughs) you made a book equivalent to a dvdr Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a book vanity project that's not even an autobiography. <laughs> uh what advice would you have for people that are writing or or trying to write a book and they're finding it difficult to push through and get to that that set number of pages to actually make a viable book? Oh, um gosh good question um i would say like find whatever your strength is focus on that and then elaborate on all of those things meaning i always thought my strength was dialogue and so or at the very least it it's my favorite thing to write uh so because of that whether i'm writing a book or uh or a script especially a script that's the first thing that i well other than like a outline but uh once i got that set then i get go through and i just write all of the dialogue and then kind of work from there branch out from that i've got the dialogue so okay now let me one rewrite a lot of it and also (laughs) like it, it kind of build from there fill in all the in-betweens expand it all of that and that's always certainly got it to the appropriate length as as far as the stuff i've written so yeah that 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 always made was very comfortable for me whenever i was writing with scripts books this is the first book i've written so 
you know, uh, maybe it'd be easier for me to answer that. Like if I've done a few others after this, but no, if you like doing it and also it's something also, if it's something that you've got a lot of passion in, in this particular case, uh, just kind of combining all these genres I like, whether it's slasher movies, post-apocalyptic movies, high school sex comedies of the eighties, like, you know, then mm-hmm. if you're really passionate about that or whatever the topic might be, um, you could, you can, you can probably get to something that you really, really like a lot and just keep at it. Cause it'll take a while. <laughs>